You look around at the world outside, and it seems an awfully precarious place. Institutions that used to seem very solid begin to seem a little more rickety than they used to. Supply lines break down. The basic fabric of society seems to be torn. So how can you live safely in a place like that? That's one thing you can depend on. That's the Dhamma. The Buddha teaches us how to find refuge, how to find safety, through developing good qualities in the mind. That's another meaning of the word Dhamma, or the Dhamma of the teachings, but also the Dhamma of the qualities you build in the mind. And those are your real protection. The teachings point the way, but they point to the reality that you want to develop inside your mind. Because what you want to protect is your determination always to do the right thing the skillful thing, to avoid what's ever unskillful, to avoid harm. And the Buddha points out two qualities in particular that are useful, that are important for providing protection. He calls them guardians of the world, the shame and compunction, hiri otapa in Pali. Shame is a word that's gotten a lot of bad press in the West, but it's important to realize there are two kinds of shame. One is the shame that's the opposite of pride, which can be debilitating. And then there's the shame that's the opposite of shamelessness. In other words, you look at a particular action and you realize it's beneath you. So it actually is not a sign of low self-esteem, the second kind of shame. It's high self-esteem. And whatever sense of self is involved in it is very useful. You want to maintain your honor, you want to maintain your, your goodness, your ability to find happiness in the world, find happiness inside, without harming anybody. Now, shame particularly means wanting to look good in the eyes of other people, and you have to choose the right people. Of course, the Buddha provides us with the right people, the Noble Sangha, in addition to himself. Whenever you do something, it's always good to think, what would Ajahn Lee think, or what would Ajahn Man? How would they look at you? And these are people who don't want to look down on you. They want to see you do well, but they'd be disappointed. If you did something that was beneath their standards, they want you to live to high standards. So you might have in the mind the idea that you, you want to please them by maintaining your high standards. That's what this sense of shame is all about. It goes hand in hand with honor. You do the honorable thing, even when it requires a fair amount of sacrifice, even when it requires a lot of sacrifice. You realize that the things you'd be sacrificing outside to do the right thing are not nearly as valuable as the realization you did, that you did the right thing in spite of the difficulty. And having that sense of honor, shame, directed at looking good in the eyes of the right people, that really does protect you. And it lifts your sense of self-esteem that you've lived in this world. And though the world may be falling apart and people are doing all kinds of dishonorable things, you're not going to stoop to their level. As for Otapat, that's more impersonal. 
it's related directly to the realization that your actions are going to have consequences, and you care about the consequences. It's the opposite of apathy. It's the opposite of callousness. Callous people do what they want, they don't care what the consequences are going to be. In other words, they don't care about other people, for sure. But they really don't care about themselves, because they haven't stopped to realize that whatever they do comes back. When you have a sense of compunction, you realize that your actions will have consequences, both affecting other people and coming back to affect yourself. You care about when you do this well. So it's a combination of right view and right resolve. Right view and the principle of karma, and leading to the deeper right view of realizing what causes suffering in the world comes from our own actions. But the way to end the suffering also comes from our own actions. And then you have the right res resolve of goodwill. You want to act in a way, given that you have this power to have an impact on yourself and on the world. You want to act in a way that's conducive to happiness. And given the principle of karma, that means conducive not only to your happiness, but the happiness of people around you. Compunction, Pali, Otapa, is often paired with Atapa, or ardency. You care enough to live your life well. Your actions, you want to have skillful actions. Your speech, you want to have skillful speech. Your thoughts, you want to have skillful thoughts. Try to approach life the same way that you would approach a craft. You have your skills, and you want to perfect your skills. And given that you've developed a certain level of skill already, you don't want to be sloppy in your work. You care. This is a principle you see throughout Asia. I've been to Japan, I've been to Thailand, and people will point out when someone did something, especially in terms of a craft, they did it really well. And they said that they really admire the attitude that went into that. Well, try to approach your life that same way. So, as the Buddha said, we're having actions that are skillful and blameless. They come from good intentions, but not just good. You want to make those intentions skillful. This is where it's useful to have the, the eyes of other people. If someone criticizes you, take their criticism into consideration. Don't be too quick to brush it off. You ask yourself, is it true? If it is true, then you've got something you can work on. But the eyes of other people also mean thinking about the eyes of the, the Ajans, the noble ones. That you'd like your actions to look good in their eyes. Because their eyes are the eyes of compassion. They want you to do well. So try to guard yourself with these attitudes. As I pointed out, compunction contains the seeds for the two of the factors of the Noble Path, right view, right resolve. Hold on those two factors, you can develop the remainder. So these two qualities, shame and compunction, really are basic to the practice. They're not just nice ideas that are tacked on here and there, but they're built into the structure of the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, all the really basic teachings. Because when the Buddha was teaching, he didn't simply want to discuss or describe reality out there. He wanted to show a path. A path of action. 
go into his words, to perform, to inspire you to follow that path, a path that leads to true happiness. He cared about your true happiness. So it's up to you to have that same level of care. Let his care inspire you. <laughs>